Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing a little Ulta haul. Why an Ulta haul? Well, I was in Ulta recently, trying to buy my palettes. Um, I really just wanted to see the display, and if you watched my vlog, you know I arrived. It was completely sold out. And yeah, that was like five minutes after they went on sale. So I browsed the store and I got a bunch of other things. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not one who can just show up into Ulta and then not look around at everything, but I did get these guys uh, online on launch day. So I ordered the needs and the wants. If y'all haven't seen the insides of these palettes by now, um, I'll show you again. But I love these palettes and I wanted extra. Somebody told me you have got to get extras so your girls can have them as little keepsakes. And I also wanted some extras to like do giveaways with. I sometimes put together little silent auction baskets throughout the year for different like charitable groups in the area and I thought wouldn't it be fun to put my own palettes in those. So I got plans and it was a real rush to um, see those come in. But as far as what else I got from Ulta, let's talk about this lip color right here. I got this from someone else's collaboration, the Melissa Michelle Lip Duo. She's got a big like collaboration with Ulta. It involves palettes and other things. It's been out for a little while and it was slim pickings on everything else that was there. There were just a few bits and pieces. So I thought I'll try the lip and I really love this color for fall and even being a matte lip color, it works really well. I wore this yesterday. The staying power was so good and even as it did start to fade by about like lunchtime on it was kind of an even fade nothing drifted outside of my lip line and even though it's matte it wasn't uncomfortable but there is a setting thing that happens with this lipstick and I like that it's a skinny lipstick I love a skinny lipstick and you put it on and it feels velvety smooth and you can kind of like I don't know, press your lips together and feel the creaminess, but then that does kind of set and you're not gonna really see it transferring off. I'm looking at my coffee cup, like did it transfer off there? It's really just adhering to the lips. Maybe a touch of color will come off, but it comes with a coordinating matte lip liner. And so I got the color Spicy and I believe the other one that was there looked a little more pinky and a little bit lighter, but I thought going forward, this might be the kind of shade that I get a lot of use out of. So great work, that's amazing. I'm kind of hard to please with matte lip colors because I do love the creamy buttery richness of just a cream lip product so that was cool and then I thought I'd stock up on a couple of staples that one I've already run out of and I told you I'm getting back together with my Milani eyeshadow primer this is the current state of affairs and I have run out of Milani eyeshadow many times over in my makeup using life but it's just a primer that works really well for me um, I recently like I had the morphe primer and it Oddly, after like weeks of use, it started coming out all oily and separated. Too Faced Shadow Insurance has done that to me. Urban Decay Primer Potion really hasn't. I do like their anti-aging formula. And there have been different primers here and there, some from e.l.f. that I've liked and whatnot, but this is just an old standby. Somebody took a picture of their palette haul and they also had one of these on it. And I was like, oh yeah, she's got the whole thing because I do think primer is important. I've been asked, should you use primer with the palettes? Absolutely you should. Um, I use eyeshadow primer with every eyeshadow I would ever use and it helps the shadows cling better, helps them last longer, helps them show up on the eyes in a more vibrant way. And that's why I never really set it. I'm not one who puts the primer on, goes all over the eye with a wash of powder and then begins the eye look because I like to take advantage of the little bit of tackiness that this leaves behind and then my colors just really stand out. Now a situation where you might want to set it would be maybe if you're using some really deep rich shades you're a little concerned about the way they're going to blend you really want to build it up slowly. Setting the primer might help you in that circumstance but if you're ever going for a real statement pop on the lid and want your shadow to be really pronounced let it cling to your eye primer and somebody asked me too like what if I have really oily lids or really dry lids or they're different primers that work better for different people. That's a discussion I feel like for the comments section. I don't have especially oily eyelids. I wouldn't call them super dry either. My eyelids seem to fall in line with the overall texture that my skin is and so this seems to work for me. Uh, it's not overly sticky or thick. It's just nice and smooth and it has just the right little bit of tackiness. But yeah, eye primer is a must-have for me. Always has been. And another thing that I repurchased is my um, Makeup Revolution Renaissance Flick Liner. 
this is my original one. This is the only one I've had, and I remember getting this when I went to Houston to the Ulta GMC, and I've been using this one pretty consistently ever since that time, and it's still not showing signs of drying out. Like, it's still juicy. It lasts a really long time. It's like the easiest liner to hold in your hand because it's a little bit thick there in the middle, and it's just, it's so user-friendly. Absolutely adore this liner pen, and I store it flat in a drawer like this. I don't use it this way or this way. I'd gotten a tip a long time ago that that gives your um, liquid pens the best longevity, and it really has proven to be true for this thing, and so I got myself another. There were like three of these in stock, I guess. I was surprised they weren't totally sold out of this item. This is an amazing liquid liner. I also got a brow product. I didn't realize um, Revolution had this duo brow definer and I got it in dark brown. It's really cool and dark and it's a tip that's sort of like that teardrop shape. It's so dark maybe you can't see but it's like a thicker tip there. And it's a pretty soft product. Like it wants to deposit quite a bit in my brows. And so the combination of it being thicker and also kind of soft, I found it to be a bit much for me and my brows because I've already got a decent amount of thickness. I've just got certain areas I want to even out. I didn't use this one today, but I used it yesterday. And so I'm not in love with this. I feel like it'd be a good texture if it was a really pinpointed liner, but because the tip is so thick, it gets a little out of control for me. But staying power was good. I mean, I can even tell with the swatch here on my hand it's not rubbing away. But yeah, that's my two cents on that product. Also, my Ulta has started carrying an in-store display of Catrice, and so I got a couple of these face palettes, which I thought were really exciting. I had seen these online, sort of hesitated on them, but once I saw them in person, I thought, let's go for it. So I got this filter in a box Photo Perfect Finishing Palette. And this costs $7.49, which for everything in here, I think is a pretty good deal. The powders are very soft. They have a nice kind of, I don't know, creaminess, richness to them. So here you're getting a bunch of different shades. And I feel like all of these sort of come under the heading of being like a brightening powder. Have you ever had some of those mosaic type powders that incorporate all of these shades in one? And it's usually something that claims to be brightening or color correcting type deal. So I set my under eye with these, mostly the pink today. I thought I'd try that one and see just what it did. It definitely mattified and I do think it brightened me up. Oh, I mixed in a little of the yellow as well. You've got this very flat matte um, contour type shade and then this highlighter that is very bold, very, very bold. And it says special effect top coat. <laughs> kind of odd to think of my highlighter as a top coat, but yeah. Interesting little variety in there. I'm definitely going to keep playing with that. And then the other one that I chose, there were even more than this. There were probably like four different, maybe five different combo palettes of this type, but I got the California in a box. And this one I thought was a nice variety of face colors. So you've got some pretty warm blushes here. That's a real enjoyable shade for me. So that kind of drew me in here. And this one's matte. And then this one is like a shimmery, apricot kind of shade. There are two tones of bronze there. They look kind of close, but in swatching them, I could tell that they're actually pretty different. This one here is quite a bit deeper. There's a little more red in this shade and then a slightly goldeny champagne highlight. So I'm wearing everything in this. Just a couple of those light powders, like I said, from this palette. I do feel like everything applied easily and evenly, blended easily. I really do like this highlight shade. I actually find this one to be just a little more wearable perhaps than the light one here. I have to be more careful with this. I was wearing it yesterday, but I love a multi-purpose palette and I feel like this one could be eyeshadow as well. Like if you wanted to make a quick eye look out of this, you totally could. Oh, and then I wanted to show you guys something that I had ordered online a while back from Ulta and this came in. It's from BH Cosmetics. It's called Aurora Lights. And this just looks so pretty on the website and the amount of dimension that these shades have when you see them in person, they're all baked eyeshadow colors. It's not what I would call a complete palette because there's nothing really matte in here. There are some like less metallic shades down in this corner, but for as bright as everything is, I really feel like I need something matte to come in and anchor it. So I think that's important to know going in with this palette. And if you study it long enough online, you'll probably come away with that assessment, you know, that you need something else with this. So what I did today was I actually used um, any amount of depth you see on my eyes. That's the Needs palette. I took my mattes here, Faith and Hope, and I just got those going in the crease um, a little bit in the outer corner. And then for a splash on the lid, I used this shade called um, Sparkling right here. 
So this looks gold, but it has this somewhat greenish sheen. Are you picking up on that, on this inner part of my lids? It looks like the actual color of glow-in-the-dark stuff, you know? And I really like it. It's beautiful. And the textures of these, this is a huge takeaway here. I thought they would be more dry just because of that bake texture, but they're all a lot softer and just more feeling like classic shadows than I would have expected. So that was a real pleasant surprise. And I think, again, you're full of statement colors here. This pink, I was playing with this the other day. That's really fun. A little bit flakier than some of the other shades, but if you're applying directly on top of eye primer, you're going to have less of an issue there. I don't like this as well as the BH Cosmetics Weekend Festival palette because that, I feel, was a balanced palette. It had a ton of color. It had different finishes and textures, but it had enough neutral balance to allow you to create the full look. But this palette is full of the pops, and I'm not really hating on it for that, but I'm just pointing it out so you know. But I was pleasantly surprised by the way those shadows felt. They were just so much creamier than I thought they'd be. I did get two more things, though, in the store while I was in there. I needed some more soaps, so I got these Ulta uh, foaming hand soaps, and I decided to get some of the fall ones. I got Fall Festival and Apple Cider, so haven't used them yet, but I have used quite a few Ulta foaming hand soaps in my day, and they're quite nice. So that is my little drugstore Ulta haul, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you to everyone who's been sharing their hauls with me. It's been so fun to see the needs or the wants or both incorporated in your hauls. I don't think that's ever going to stop being like jaw-dropping to see them showing up in your hands because I feel like I worked on them for so long and they were a secret for so long and now just like seeing them out in the open, seeing your looks with them, I'm amazed. Your talent. You guys are sniffing out some color combos I hadn't even thought of yet, but I also love that you're not hesitating to share just your basic general everyday looks because I want to see it all. I was telling somebody in the comments like these aren't just palettes for makeup artists and the creators on Instagram that are doing like actual works of art on their eyes. I mean, that's beautiful and great, but I want you guys to know that these are for everyone and I want them to be approachable and easy to use for everybody out there. So thank you so, so much for the love and support. I cannot thank you enough and I will see you soon. Bye.